Airtable forms are an easy way to gather data from clients, coworkers, or anyone on the web. And while it's often convenient to let users respond to your forms however they want, sometimes it's better to pre-fill forms for them to reduce errors and keep your data consistent. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up pre-filled fields in your Airtable forms with a customized URL. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we build no-code and low-code systems that rely on Airtable to manage data and create simple human touch points with forms and interfaces. If you'd like to learn more about optimizing and automating your workflows with tools like Airtable, Notion, Zapier, Make, and more, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And turn on those notifications too, so you don't miss any new videos. In this video, I'll walk you through the basic process for adding pre-filled fields to an Airtable form with URL encoding. Then I'll show you the specific details you need to account for when pre-filling select fields, linked records, and date and time fields. Those are a little tricky too. Finally, I'll demonstrate how you can hide your pre-filled fields to make sure that your users don't edit the pre-filled values that you've provided. Setting up pre-filled fields is an easy way to make your Airtable forms more powerful, so let's jump in and get started. To begin making an Airtable form with pre-filled values, you'll need the URL of the existing Airtable form. To be clear, this is the URL where people can access your form and submit responses, not the URL of the base where you can edit your form and its settings. You can find this URL by clicking on Open Form. Copy the form's URL, then paste it or save it somewhere so you can easily reference it later. I'll save it as a text pin in X-Ray Workflow, so I can quickly copy it with one click. To pre-fill a value in an Airtable form field, you just need to add question mark prefill underscore at the end of the form's URL. Then specify the field name that you want to prefill using URL encoding for spaces and special characters. The field name should be typed exactly as it appears in Airtable, including capitalization. This is case sensitive. However, spaces and special characters will need to be replaced with URL encoded syntax. For instance, any space should be entered as percent %20 or as a plus sign. You can find a full list of symbols and their URL encoded equivalents in the resources board linked in the description of this video. So if you want to fill in the text example field, we need to enter text plus example after the question mark. Now we need to provide the value that will be pre-filled in this field. Add an equal sign after the field name, then enter the value that you want to pre-fill into this field. Again, you'll need to use URL encoding to properly render spaces or special characters. So we've created a pre-filled form URL that should automatically enter the words pre-filled sample text into the text example field. When we paste it into the URL bar, it opens up the Airtable form and we can see that the phrase pre-filled sample text is already typed into the text example field. Alternatively, if you think your field name might change in the future, you could use the field ID to identify the field that you want to pre-fill. Select Manage Fields under the Tools menu to see more information about all the fields in that particular table. Click on the little settings icon on the top right under the Add New Field button. This will allow you to toggle column visibility, giving you access to all of the field's metadata. We're interested in the field ID, so we'll check the box to make it visible. Now, instead of the field name in our URL, we can add the field ID, enabling us to freely change the field name at any point in the future, while maintaining the prefill we've just configured. However, for this tutorial, we'll keep using the field name so it's easier to follow along. Prefilling single and multi-select fields works in largely the same way as prefilling a text field. Just enter the name of the option that you want to prefill after the equal sign. When we enter select equals option two, the form is prefilled with option two in the select field. Note that if you enter an option that doesn't exist yet in the select field, the field won't be prefilled and the option won't be added to the table. You'll have to pick from existing choices. This applies to multi-select fields as well. If you want to enter multiple choices into a multi-select field, just separate them with a comma and no spaces. I'll make a prefill URL to add B and D to the multiple select field. 
and the form is pre-filled with both B and D for the multiple select field. You can also pre-fill several fields at once if you want. Just separate each pre-fill with an ampersand. Note that you'll still need to use the word pre-fill before each value you want to automatically fill in. I'll combine all three pre-fills that we've done so far into a single pre-filled URL. The multiple select field is set to B and D, the single select field is set to option two, and the text field is pre-filled sample text. Again, note that I'm adding pre-fill before every field I want to pre-fill. If your pre-fills aren't working, make sure to check for missing terms or characters, or just switch to the field ID. When I open up the URL, all three fields are filled out correctly. You can essentially pre-fill as many fields as you'd like. Just note that you're limited to 1600 characters in the URL. Prefilling text-based fields is very straightforward. Prefilling other field types like linked records or date and time is a little different, but still very simple. Let's start with linked records. To prefill a linked record in an Airtable form, add question mark prefill underscore at the end of the form URL. Then enter the name or field ID of the linked record field that you want to prefill. Add an equal sign, then enter the record ID of the record you want to link to. There are two easy ways to grab a record ID in Airtable. One way is to expand the record, then copy the ID from the URL bar. The record ID will always start with REC and end before the question mark. Alternatively, you could add a formula field to the table and enter the record ID function. Then you can just select the cell and copy it to grab the ID for any given record. Once you have the record ID, paste it into your prefill URL. In this linked records field, we'll prefill record one from this linked table. Then when you open up the form with your prefilled URL, you should see the linked record prefilled correctly. Just like with multi-select fields, you can prefill several records in a linked record field so long as the linking multiple records setting is enabled in the field settings. Just separate each record ID with a comma. Here, we've added two records to the prefill URL, record one and record three, and when we open it up, both records are there. Prefilling a date and time field works similarly to prefilling text and linked records, but it requires you to use a specific format for the date and time. It's called ISO 8601. You can find more information about ISO 8601 formatting in the resources board linked in the description. So here's what a pre-filled date for an Airtable form would look like. We start with the usual pre-fill syntax, question mark, pre-fill, underscore, and the field name with URL encoding for spaces or field ID. Then an equal sign. And now we enter the date and time. That will be the year as four digits, a hyphen, a two digit month, hyphen, and a two-digit day. So 2024, hyphen 02, hyphen 01 will be February 1st, 2024. Then we add a T and enter the time in hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds using 24-hour time. You'll use two digits each for hours, minutes, and seconds and separate them with a colon. Then if you really wanna be precise, add a period after the seconds and use three digits for milliseconds. Maybe you're keeping track of a sprinting world record or something. If you don't want to include seconds or milliseconds, you can either set them all to zero or just leave them out. So the 1730.000 that we've entered here is equivalent to 5.30 p.m. The time zone will depend on the time zone setting of your base. Now let's check this prefilled date and time. The date and time field is filled in with February 2nd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. In many cases, you might want to hide the fields you've pre-filled to prevent users from accidentally editing the data that you've pre-filled. To hide a pre-filled field, you just need to add another attribute to your form URL. Let's say we want to pre-fill the linked record field with record one and hide the linked records field. We'll start with the usual prefill attribute, identifying the linked records field and the record ID of record one. Then to hide the field, add an ampersand and the word hide followed by an underscore. 
Then enter the name of the field you want to hide using URL encoding to replace spaces or special characters. Alternatively, you could use the field ID instead. After the field name, add an equal sign, then the word true. So our final attribute looks like this, hide underscore linked plus records equal true. Let's test this URL. When we open up the form, we can't see the linked records field, so we know the hide attribute worked. But since we can't see the field, we don't know if the prefill worked too. I'll just enter hidden field test in the name field and submit the form. Back in the Airtable base grid view, I can see the record I just submitted, and linked records is filled in with record one, so the prefill worked too. One thing to note when hiding fields is that your users could always theoretically delete your hide attribute from the URL and reveal the hidden field, then edit it however they'd like. Hiding a field isn't a secure way to prevent edits, and it shouldn't be used to prevent access to a field with private or sensitive information. Instead, it's really about convenience and reducing errors for whoever's filling out the form. You should use it to help people save time and pre-select the values they would need to select anyway. Hiding a field just makes it much less likely for the user to accidentally pick the wrong value. And that covers all the basics of pre-filling and hiding Airtable form fields. Let us know in the comments down below if you'd like to see a video taking this concept a little bit further, exploring how you can assemble a pre-filled URL using Airtable formulas. On this channel, we make videos by popular demand, so don't be shy and let us know what you think in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can check all those links in the resources board down below. And as always, find your focus and stay in flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our Workflow Designer course.